having fun yet? I'm having fun hanging out with myself. The sun is driving me nuts today though. I'm sure this video is gonna be like bright and dark and bright and dark and bright and dark and you know, I just want the natural lit vibe. And this is what you have to deal with. I can control the sun like I control my camera. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. This is The Bite Shot and I'm here to help you in your quest towards fabulous food photos. You're probably already taking fabulous food photos and if you're questioning that, then definitely sit and ponder that because I question my photos every single day and I go, eh, they're all right. They're fun. But honestly, I get paid to take pictures of food. So clearly I'm doing something right and I wanna share with you what some of those things are. Now, if you are just landing on this channel, this is the first thing you're seeing. I'm so glad you're here. I'm super stoked that you found my channel. But this is the third video in a series of five all about the foundations of photography. So you're kind of jumping in midstream at this point and we've already established some sort of important ground rules about photography. So if you wouldn't mind, well, it's totally up to you. You can watch this video first, but when I start throwing out terms like aperture and shutter speed and you're like, what is she talking about? Uh, you can go back and watch those previous videos. I have got those all linked. But if you already watched those videos, then you're super pumped and you're super empowered or maybe you're discouraged because you're still like, Joni, my images still don't look great even though I can rock an aperture and I know about shutter speed, but now my images, they're not bright enough or they're not whatever, they're not vibey enough. Well, we got a lot to cover. But we are gonna round out the very important holy trinity of photography. I think that's what people call it, that's what I call it. It's like the triumvirate, trio. It's the three together that make the overall exposure and we are talking about ISO, ISO. It's not isogenics, this is not a health food video, this is not about pumping you up. Is that what isogenics even is? I don't know. I don't work on my fitness, I work on my pizza. I mean, honestly, food photography is quite the workout. I mean, you should see, like when I do a shoot, I'm jumping on tables and chairs and it's quite a workout. So don't you worry, I get my fitness in. And so the ISO, you will see this on your camera settings. If you have not found it already, go ahead and hit pause. I'll give you some time figure it out, find where it is. This is usually a really quick little hot button that you can, sometimes it's even like on my Sony a6000 here, it is labeled, it says ISO, and if I hit that, I can just toggle it up and down, up and down, up and down, right? 100 is the lowest setting. Now, a lot of people like to rock in auto mode, but that's not what I do. I rock in manual because I'm a control freak. I want control over those images. I wanna tell the camera what to do. I don't want it telling me what to do. So 100 is kind of our baseline, right? Like that that is ISO ground zero, even though it's ground 100. Numbers confusing. So ISO is all about how receptive is that little sensor inside our camera to the light that's coming in. Because of course we start off with our aperture, which we learned about is allowing a certain amount of light in. And then our shutter speed, of course, how long is that shutter staying open or how quickly is it closing is also dictating how much light is coming in. But say you've got a low enough shutter speed and you have an aperture that's a pretty narrow depth of field so it's letting a lot of light in but that image is still just a little too dark that's when you jump on your ISO and you start to bump it up. So we can bump it up to 200, 300, 400, 500. As you start to go higher in that ISO, it is going to compensate and make for a brighter image and a brighter overall exposure. But it's tricky territory. And now again, this is a stylistic thing. So you do you, you do what makes you happy. But as you start to bump up that ISO higher and higher and higher, you will notice your images will get grainier and grainier and grainier, which is totally a stylistic thing if you like that grainy kind of edgy kind of vintagey feel then totally rock it out you bump that ISO up however high you want but for me just stylistically when I'm shooting food I really want to be able to see the glisten that is on that ice cream that nice little just ah money. And so I don't want to bump up the ISO too much in order to cause that to look grainy. I really want all of the information because that's really what's happening when we're taking a picture. It's recording information on a memory card, which then I'm going to stick in my computer and then I'm going to manipulate it in post-processing. And I want as much information there as possible. So a lower ISO is going to do that. But again, if you like that higher grainier feel, that's cool. Or if you're in a situation like in a restaurant and you 
just really have no other alternative and you want to bump up that ISO, then you can definitely do that. It's a free country here, at least here, where we're making this video, and thank God it is, and I'm super thankful for that. But that's it. That's really all ISO is. So you play with that, okay? So you know where your ISO is, you know where your shutter speed is, you know where your aperture is. And I know that's a lot of buttons and that's a lot of settings and you're gonna start messing with this thing and going, oh my God, okay, do I have to do this for every picture? And I'm gonna say, yeah. But I promise, the more you do it, the more you play with it, the more you force yourself over that edge to spend time with it and really adopt the discipline of being in manual mode, it is gonna change your life. I promise it's gonna change your photos. But that's not it, you guys. I know, I'm just, mm, I have a lot to say. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got memory cards for days. And YouTube doesn't seem to limit how long you can talk. I mean, I've seen people do like an hour and a half video. But now you have the very vital foundations of photography, whether you're shooting food or people or landscapes or anything, that is the foundation. But there's just a couple more little foundational things that I wanna make sure you know before we jump into the deep end and I start talking about all sorts of crazy stuff. There's just some basics I wanna make sure you know, including next up, white balance and how to set your white balance, how to deal with it, what all of that color temperature means, we're gonna talk about it. So you stick around, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video and all of my other fun shenanigans here on The Bite Shot. And if you like this video, you found it helpful, you wanna share it with friends, go ahead and hit that like button because it's also helpful for me to know what you like and what you don't like. And if you don't like it, well then I'll stop doing it for heaven's sakes. But if you have any questions as it relates to ISO or shutter speed or aperture or really anything. Just give me a holler. I'd love to answer your questions. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a fabulous, wonderful day. I hope you spend some good time with your camera. Get to know it. Love it. Push yourself. Go past the limit. You got to fight for your right to, I don't know, mm, puns, not my thing. Have a great day, you guys. I will see you soon. All right. Bye. I still can't decide. Do I want the elbow up or the elbow down? Mm. 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 This is probably more controlled. <laughs>